I'll, I'll answer your first part of your question, which talked a little bit about municipalities um, and what they can do to kind of reduce waste. I think one of the um, most visible examples are municipalities that have incorporated bag bans. Um, I think the uh, state of California defeated it, but uh, LA just passed a bag ban. Um, and this is this would be on single-use bags um, at stores, which um, literally it's a bag that you are just using to transport from the store to your home, and then immediately it becomes disposed of. Um, and so, these banning this kind of um, single-use um, bags, I think, have been um, proliferating like crazy. Seattle has a bag ban. Um, and we have, over here in the D.C. area, we have two uh, bag taxes in place, Montgomery County, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. Uh, Washington, D.C.'s program has been ongoing for a little while now, and they've been pretty happy with it. They It was framed as a water quality issue, not a solid waste management issue, um, but they, they're having some success. It has it has not been a catastrophe, as um, as is, is sometimes uh, forecast. But and but there have been snags. Um, but that program is ongoing and um, a really good model to look at. I think another question that Katrina was asking about is is what we'd call commercial recycling and mm -hmm. why that is treated differently from residential and public institution recycling in some but not all cities. Um, and I can speak to the experience of New York where we have that in the extreme. We have one giant centralized um, public sector agency that's serving 8 million residents and, and thousands of public institutions. And then we have an almost wild west free market of hundreds of different private carters that are competing to, to pick up, um, to pick up uh, commercial waste. And what happens is that um, quite rationally these guys um, will collect corrugated cardboard and maybe bulk metal when the markets are good and, and nothing else. You know, I mean, it, it, this is what happens when you have a free market situation. On the other extreme is San Francisco where you have one giant private service provider who is collecting all residential and all commercial. You have beautiful economies of scale. You've got the mandatory uh, program, but even before the, the program was made mandatory, it was very successful. Um, so if you can overcome political opposition on the part of the existing um, commercial carters to moving to um, more consolidated um, uh, forms of collection, I think you can really improve waste management in a city. A question I have that I'd like to throw out to the panel that relates to this. I've heard discussions in the past, but I've not heard of a municipality that has adopted it. Is a litter tax on those businesses that seem to proliferate, pro, uh, increase a lot of, of litter, such as fast food litter, where as I heard it discussed, there would be surveys done periodically of the litter and the types of litter that seem to relate to certain industries would relate to the type of tax they would have on the products they, did, they distribute, you know, like hamburger wrappers or whatever it may be. I don't know that any municipality has passed a litter tax tailored towards commercial retail. Uh, does anyone know if that has worked anywhere? Um, here in Virginia, not as a municipality, but the state has something that is colloquially referred to as the litter tax. And that is a decades old compromise that was struck to keep out a deposit bill. But um, it is effectively on items that are frequently littered, even though it was originally to be on items that would have been subject to a deposit bill because it's now on producers and retailers of items in bottles, which bottle beverages consumed away from home are a large portion of the litter sector. And then in return, that money is used, uh, it was originally put just for litter control and litter cleanups. It is also partially used to fund recycling in many of the recipients of that money. So 
that is a connection between the retailer of the littered item and the litter itself. Uh, but again, that's at a state level, and that's sort of almost coincidental since that was an original the original intent. Interesting. You know, um, I, I feel compelled to go back to the uh, commercial recycling question because I should have mentioned, you know, being uh, uh, working for the Delaware Solid Waste Authority. Um, Delaware does have a universal recycling law, and um, although it's um, commercial entities, businesses aren't included yet, starting uh, in 2014, uh, commercial businesses will also have to be um, uh, provided with recycling services. So the recycling law, um, as mandated, just requires all the haulers to provide recycling services at no additional cost but it doesn't actually mandate that the um, entity that receives the cart has to recycle. Um, but nonetheless, it's increased recycling rates um, tremendously. 